Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macro video. Uh, in this short topic video, we're going to take a couple of minutes to look at the scale of containerization in the world economy and also the significance of containerization for global trade in goods. Over 200 countries now around the world have ports that are open to container ships carrying those standardized containers that are 20 foot in length. And uh, in fact, the amount of tonnage handled by ports is measured in TEUs, 20 foot equivalent units. Just last year, uh, containers handled by all ports around the world, according to the World Shipping Council, estimated at more than 785 million 20-foot uh, equivalent units. This is a huge aspect of the world economy. So what is containerization? Well, it's a system of freight transport uh, for use in sea shipping that is effectively lowered significantly the transportation costs of moving thousands of different products around the world. Containers have standardized dimensions and it's widely recognized by economists who study uh, growth and trade and specialization that containerization has been a catalyst for globalization. It's a, always a great point to make in terms of causation. If we look at the global container market, uh, the projected demand growth all the way through to the end of 2019, indeed there's no real sign of any significant let up. Uh, there was a bit of a downturn in growth in 2012 to 2016, but the global container market is growing still at more than 4% per year, faster than the world economy, suggesting that containerization, of course, is linked to uh, the rise in trade. Lovely quote here from Rainer Horn from Hapag Lloyd, who argued it doesn't matter anymore where you produce something now because transport costs aren't important. Uh, containerization has been one of those factors helping to bring about the death of distance. It's been a catalyst or trade and the emergence of and the deepening of global supply chains. Why is containerization significant? Why is it a great point to make in an essay? Well, a standardized container can be handled anywhere in the world and ships and ports, and there was the infrastructure surrounding this, uh, they adjust to handling the standardized container with optimum efficiency and of course with huge economies of scale. Uh, so ports become incredibly efficient handling containers as they arrive at port side. Manufacturers of products can also optimize their own packaging. Uh, an Apple iPhone or whatever it is, a new camera, they can optimize their packaging to fit into a container and thus uh, achieve a, a container principle, one of the container principle commas of scale to bring down the unit cost of transportation. And by lowering the cost of trade, Containerization has therefore encouraged countries to specialize and it's also encouraged the expansion of global supply chains and shipping lanes across the world. If you look at international seaborne trade carried by container ships over a long period of time, all the way back to 1980, you can see in terms of millions of tons loaded, the surge in the growth, 2017, uh, 1.8 billion um, tons loaded. Significant rise, particularly that period from 1995 through to 2005. Obviously, there was then a world recession, uh, and globalization, of course, has been under threat, but there has been a, a pickup again in the last two to three years. And some firms, of course, have become huge scaled businesses on the back of this. These are the leading ship operators, and it's the share of the world liner fleet as of the end of last month, October 2019. Uh, Maersk, of course, the Danish uh, company, is by far and away the biggest. They've got nearly 20% of the world shipping um, market. Phenomenal size, some of these big companies around the world. Singapore is a great example of a country you can link containerization to in terms of some of the impact of globalization. So Singapore has become a trade hub economy for the world. And as we'll see in a few seconds, other countries have done the same. Singapore has a population of just over four, five million, but yet they moved 34 million TEUs in 2017. That's more than Italy, France, Russia, Sweden and the UK combined. Places like Singapore and Rotterdam in Holland and one or two other places as well have become essentially global hubs where a lot of the merchandise trade and goods uh, comes in and goes out very quickly. 
Uh, these are the largest container ports worldwide last year based on throughput, based on the amount of um, container ports coming through, shippage coming through in millions of TEUs. Shanghai was the biggest in 2018, then followed by Singapore. Uh, Shenzhen's in there, lots of uh, obviously Chinese Southeast Asian uh, container ports are right at the top there. Dubai, just squeezing in at the bottom, just under 15 million TEUs. In terms of Europe's biggest cargo ports, uh, we've mentioned uh, Holland. Rotterdam is the busiest port in the European Union by a large, significant margin. If you want a great example for your notes of economies of scale, think about the big, huge port at Rotterdam, which is capable of, of handling huge tonnage of freight and goods. Over 433,000 tonnes of goods passed through Rotterdam in 2017. In fact, Rotterdam as a port took 10% of European cargo by gross weight in 2017. A really good example of a country that's building its own competitive, comparative, scaled advantage in handling the goods that are coming from Asia, from America and other parts of the world. There we go, a quick look at the concept of containerization.